Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and proud New Yorker. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. With a trigger warning and content warning that we will be talking about 9-11. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, in 2001, the United States experienced one of the largest tragedies in modern history, the September 11th terrorist attacks. It's rare for an event to be so catastrophic that the day becomes singularly known for the event, but this is one of the examples. You can't say September 11th or 9-11 without thinking about the attacks on the Twin Towers. Though everyone knows the general details of 9-11, fewer people know the specifics of the attacks. 19 members of the Al-Qaeda terrorist group hijacked four commercial flights within the east coast of the United States. Two planes hit the Twin Towers, one plane hit the Pentagon, and one plane was recaptured by its passengers and crashed into a field. Around 3,000 people were killed over the course of the attacks. An important part of history is remembering the details, so let's reverse and talk about the deeper story of 9-11 on this, the 20th anniversary of the attacks. The first attack took place at 8.45 a.m. when an American Airlines Boeing 747 crashed into the North Tower at the World Trade Center. The tower did not collapse upon first impact. Instead, the plane left a burning hole in the 80th floor of the skyscraper. Hundreds of people were killed on impact, and people on the 30 floors above were trapped. 18 minutes after the first plane hit, a second Boeing 767, United Airlines Flight 175, crashed into the South Tower near the 60th floor. That second collision caused a huge explosion. Meanwhile, American Airlines Flight 177 crashed into the Pentagon, the military headquarters of the United States, at 9.45 a.m. 125 military personnel and civilians were killed at the Pentagon, as well as 64 people who were on the airplane that hit the building. Shortly after the Pentagon was hit, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. The skyscraper was constructed out of steel, and the steel beams melted in the huge amount of burning jet fuel. 30 minutes later, the North Tower collapsed. Of the people who were still in the towers when they collapsed, only six survived. The hijackers of the planes were Islamic terrorists mostly hailing from Saudi Arabia. It is believed that they were financed by the Al-Qaeda terrorist organization under the leadership of Saudi fugitive Osama bin Laden. It's alleged that they were acting in retaliation for the United States' support of Israel its involvement in the Persian Gulf War, and the ongoing military presence in the Middle East. The hijackers had been training for a long time to execute the attacks. Some of them had been living in the United States for over a year and even trained at American flight schools. They smuggled knives and box cutters through security at three East Coast airports. They boarded four different early morning flights bound for California, but none of the planes ever left the East Coast. They chose the long-distance flights because those planes were loaded with fuel for cross-country journeys. Shortly after each of the planes took off, the terrorists commandeered the vehicles and took control from the pilots. The hijackers of the last plane, United 93, were thwarted before they could hit their intended target. That plane was late to take off from Newark Liberty International Airport in New Jersey, and as a result, people on board the plane were hearing about the attacks from family members on the ground via air phone calls. At this point, the hijackers had already overtaken the pilots, but they said on the PA system that they were returning to Newark Airport. The passengers realized that this was a lie from the hijackers. Several passengers and flight attendants bravely decided to intervene with an insurrection. Because of the phone calls, several of the passengers' last words are known. Thomas Burnett Jr. told his wife over the phone, I know we're all going to die. There's three of us who are going to do something about it. I love you, honey. Another passenger, Todd Beamer, was overheard saying, Are you guys ready? Let's roll. The three men and several flight attendants then went to attempt to take the plane back from the hijackers. In the ensuing scuffle, it is suspected that they attacked the hijack pilot with a fire extinguisher and threw boiling water on the other hijackers. When the hijackers were apprehended, the plane flipped over and crashed to the ground at over 500 miles per hour. It crashed in a field in western Pennsylvania at about 
10.10 a.m. Though no one survived, it is believed that the plane was headed for a location in Washington, D.C., possibly the White House, the Capitol Building, Camp David, or a nuclear power plant, and countless lives were doubtlessly saved by the plane missing its intended target. As the years pass between 2001 and the present moment, it's important to keep the discussion of the September 11th attacks alive and to never forget the lives lost that day. Now let's talk about music. Today, our music fact is closely related to our history fact. 9-11 was a huge turning point in the lives of many Americans, young and old. It changed people's perspectives and terrified people deeply. For some, it was a moment to reflect and think about the direction of our lives. One example is Gerard Way, the frontman of My Chemical Romance. Way was on the Manhattan Ferry when the Twin Towers collapsed. As he watched in horror, he realized that it could have been him, or anyone he knew who fell victim to a horrific attack that day. He decided that life was too short to not follow your dreams, and shortly after, he started My Chemical Romance. Hopefully his music has inspired other generations of young people to follow their own dreams as well. And now for today's final segment, I'll be going back into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a September 11th of my life. Let's see, let's see. Did I do anything exciting at all or interesting or worthwhile to talk about? It doesn't look like it. I just have, again, a lot of photos of my cat and it doesn't seem very, very interesting. Um, I did, however, in 2016 on September 11th, wrote an essay that directly slandered Hamilton. Um, not the musical, but the actual individual. Uh, I think it was, um, I was doing like a debate or something and I wrote, about like Hamilton had a plan for the banks or whatever. And I said, Hamilton shared his plan, but we will not talk about it as it, as it is irrelevant. And, um, not, no, I hadn't seen Hamilton, the musical at that point. I don't even know if it was out yet. I think it was out the next year, but wait, I don't even remember. When did Hamilton come out? Now I got to check this out. 2015. Okay. never mind. Um, yeah, I definitely still intentionally slandered Hamilton. I take that back. It's, it was a year. I had a year to, um, to be conscious of Hamilton in pop culture and I still decided to be mean to him. So yeah. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.